Nobody gives you a guidebook on how to have a successful career as an author. You write a book that's rejected, so you write another. You get an agent, you land a book deal, you have a couple of series released. Some do okay, others tank, and somewhere along the way you lose your spark. You start to think business instead of art. Paychecks over passion. You start to hate the business. You miss the days before the book deals and deadlines. But then you get an idea. What if you didn't have to face this journey alone? What if you found someone else, someone other than yourself, to bring back the fun and telling stories? Hello everybody, today I'm here with author Lindsay Cummings of the Murder Complex. Oh my god! <laughs> what if you found a co-author, a friend, and together you did something different? The two of you start writing. You mold your ideas together. You breathe life into those characters and you travel the world and you dream about places that only exist in the planes of your two minds. The good news is, is that we can write a book quite well together. <laughs> we can't navigate, we can't navigate cities. cities. You laugh and you cry and you crawl your way to the end of the story and you dare to dream some more and somewhere along the way, the two of you write the end. You send that story off. You share it with the world. You watch it come to life. So I just got off of the plane in Chicago. I don't know where so Oh my god! <laughs> it's a fix, it's a fix. Oh no, it's starting a fix. off really glamorous. We can't find our ride. And both of the phone numbers we have of course it's went, to went to like no one. Spam. So, um. so but it's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's snowing. It should stop. <laughs> but not for Lindsay. It should keep on snowing for her. And you can actually kind of see it on video. It's like this every time we get together. We get off the plane, we reconnect, we talk about things that have nothing to do with Zenith. We always argue like sisters. I need a new room. <laughs> partnering with Sasha is like partnering with a racehorse. She has this explosive energy right out of the gate. We're a unique combo, the two of us. People often compare us to darkness and light. Sometimes I say Beauty and the Beast. You can decide who is who. But that night, we didn't really know what to expect with Tour. We were nervous, we were excited, we were a million different things as we sat down for dinner. The book was releasing in the morning, which meant we were heading into the unknown. I think it's weird, like honestly, like um, releasing my debut because technically I've already released it. Well, 60 pages of it. So it's kind of like the second half of releasing my debut. It, I don't think it's gonna be real until we're actually at the bookstore. I think the number one tip I would give to someone who's going on book tour is bring concealer for your under eye circles. It was time for the official book tour to launch. We ate breakfast, Sasha ate, I picked up my food because of nerves, and we stopped at a gorgeous all-female private school to give a chat to the students about Zenith, the perfect audience for a book about an all-female crew of space pirates. So we are about to start doing our school presentation, so I'm doing the setup real quick, and then we're gonna get started. We chatted with the girls about reading, about their dreams in life, and then we headed back to the hotel to prep for the actual book launch that night. We just got done speaking at Sasha's school and we are so excited. Yay! <laughs> go, go, go! <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna break your You're spine. You're not! <laughs> You're like <looking> so shaky. <laughs> Say hi. Hi! Is this for the Zenith documentary? I'm moderating the event tonight, I'm so excited. It's Zenith release night. It's a pretty big deal. Two of my friends have put a book out into the world and I'm so proud of them. And it's just so exciting and I can't wait for people to read it. It's gonna be great. With the wonderful Jesse in tow, we headed off to the event. It would take place at Anderson's Bookshop, a lovely little indie shop in the Chicago Metroplex. The very place where Sasha and I first met years before on my tour for the murder complex. We did a quick Facebook Live on the Harlequin Teen page, and then the guests began to arrive. 
I love the book. <laughs> it's a, I've actually read the book and it's a great book. I'm like this guy. <laughs> well, it's here now. So now uh -huh. you can read it. I love it, but I'm so proud and so happy I know, for you it's guys. so exciting. A hundred percent. Hi, I'm Caitlin, I work at Anderson's Bookshop, and we are so excited to have Lindsay Cummings and Sasha Osberg here with us tonight. We have a great turnout, we're super excited for it. And there it was, the official launch of the book. In just a moment, we would walk out into the crowd, sit down anxiously at the table, and unveil the wild story behind Zenith. And galaxies and nebulas and all that fun stuff. So if you like sci-fi, you're gonna like this book. And if you hate sci-fi, I don't know why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> you should just Yeah, so it's actually really cool because we're at Anderson's for the launch of Zenith, and- We met Anne at Anderson's. Yeah, yeah, the origin story of that is Anderson's, which is why this is so special, it's so fun. There's no feeling like it. To know that a book you once wrote in silence is now being heard. To know that characters that only existed in your head are now being held in the hands of so many readers across the globe. To sit in front of a crowd to talk about that process, it's like letting loose a sigh that's been building up in your chest for years. Free book. Yay! It's so exciting. That did you sign the really pillar happy. already? Yeah, I did. I missed she it. Got, she got a video for me. Okay, good. So. <laughs> I was there. She was on top of it. Yes. I want this one. Excellent Ooh. choice. Maggie's too Wait, sound copy. There's a okay, sign copy. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> that one is too. Yeah. Yay. Yes, Maggie. It's 11 o'clock. We're just now eating dinner. <laughs> Energy levels are low. Energy levels have, have dropped to a minimum. Um, but we have these killer sweet potato fries. Mm. Jesse, give me your thoughts on them. They're killer. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, that concludes day one of book tour. Nine more to go. <laughs> oh man. It is 8 a.m. on day two or three. I think I've kind of started to lose track at this point because these days feel like, like full scale day. <laughs> like each little part of the day feels like one full day. We ended up selling out of books, which is like just a really good sign. Like that, that's what you hope for. This morning we are heading off to Milwaukee and we're going to do it all over again. And so began the blur of Zenith book tour. It's interesting taking an author from their silent writing cave and placing them into the real world. One full of more school visits and school signings and visits to the Mars Cheese Castle. One that inevitably includes a stop at a cozy coffee shop nestled in the snow. It's a beautiful thing, a chance to get re-inspired all while the exhaustion settles in like an old friend. But somewhere along the way, the adventure grabs a hold and you find yourself in the middle of a sprawling city doing something completely spontaneous. Ooh, that was my favorite bag. So we're in Milwaukee now. We have a really cool old building thing. And then some kind of court. Is that a Starbucks? Look out your window and look at the Starbucks. I know, it's hit. <laughs> I, I, I saw it when I first walked in. I'm like, that must be a nice Starbucks. Okay, I'm coming over to get you and we're gonna go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go. Oh my God. Here we are. <laughs> a whole day later. 
What were you thinking when you decided that was the shirt for tonight? I was thinking I have these socks oh and God. they match the shirt. So, so um, just that was it. I must wear these together. <laughs> These are these are all of the questions. I, it's fine because you can't actually read any of my handwriting. There is nothing more fun than doing an event. We're so excited to be part of the launch of Zenith, and I can't tell you how excited I am. So, so I'm not going to. <laughs> Let's give them a big hand. Thank you all for coming to Boswell. And there they are. <laughs> Thank you. We met online actually around four years ago um, when I was a sophomore in high school and Lindsay was a debut author. Uh, she was publishing her first novel, The Murder Complex, and she asked me if I wanted to get an advanced reader's copy of her book and I was geeking out big time. Like, oh my gosh, an author just emailed me. I'm so freaking out right now. And now it's just so funny how far we've come from that because now she's one of my best friends and it's just amazing that we've created a book together. I have published books before this and I was getting kind of bogged down by like the process of it and I know Sasha just she loves writing and she loves storytelling and together we were like we want this to be fun and so we decided that we were just going to self-publish it and it was going to be a novella yeah and it wasn't until um, a week after we launched it which was um, June 21st of 2016 that I got a call from my agent when I was at Universal Studios in line for a ride I never really thought about hitting the New York Times list never once in my brain did I think oh yeah New York Times list we would hit it we hit the New York Times list and my heart just like stopped for a second because that is like the pinnacle it's like a dream that you know my whole life i wanted and and i was like that's never gonna happen it doesn't happen to people like us yeah and she goes not only did we hit the new york times list but we hit the number one spot <laughs> i got my first book deal when i was 19 and some people said you're too young you don't have life experiences to write a novel and some people you are saying but i'm you know i'm in my 50s doesn't matter. Sasha also got her first book deal for Zenith when she was 19, which I love because that's just like this full circle thing. Like we were in the dance, and we also have had book deals at 19. Like after that, it became a bit more of a blur. Another car ride, another plane, carting us off to someplace distant and new. Here we have this fancy lamp. But no, it's not a lamp, it's a bust of some dude. A time for me to put down the camera and reconnect with an old high school friend who forced me to try duck for the first time. Here you go. Italian duck. That's so good. It just tastes kind of like chicken. Kind of, yeah. Or the the or like tomato kind of covers the duck taste, Yeah. but that's fine. Good. <laughs> And then it was back to the event, back to the whirlwind. The exhaustion doesn't quite go away. But each time you walk into another bookstore, each time you see the crowds and the excitement and the true love of reading, now that's something to write about. Especially when we were graced with the presence of author Holly Black, whose books transformed my own writing as a child, whose stories helped inspire me to write my own. We can carry our new shirts in there. That's amazing. Yeah. You're amazing. I've really enjoyed working in events so far. I'm pretty new to it, but it's really cool to see the enthusiasm that fans have for authors. Um, to see a big turnout like we had tonight, and people hanging around, wanting to talk, wanting to, you know, having all sorts of thoughtful and interesting questions, and getting to see them engage. And of course, hearing what the authors themselves have to say is really fun as well. And kind of always, it's different every every night, you know. And I really like that about it. After 
We're seeing Zenith in the wild for the very first time. We signed some stock, a lot of stock. We worked with Good Choice Reading, a book blogger who set up an international pre-order campaign. In the back of Barnes & Noble, we signed for a few hours and enjoyed what we would soon realize would become our daily lunch for the remainder of book tour, bookstore sandwiches and coffee. After that, we headed off to a funky Soho hotel, an unusual setting for this small town girl. What's up you guys? I finally made it to the hotel in New York and I walked into my room. <sighs> Never in my life have I stayed in something this fancy. I gotta show you. craziest part of this room. I kid you not. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I didn't even know this existed in hotels. A normal bathroom. Well, not normal at all. What? Shut the door. What? I know what you're thinking. How are you supposed to shower when the entire New York City can see you? There's a solution for this, my friends. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Two seconds ago there was a giant bathroom glass thing and now it's like a tree. The event would take place at Artist and Flea in Soho, a really unique place for a book event. There we met up with a new YouTuber who conducted her very first author interview. A fun flashback moment for Sasha and me. It reminded us of our very first interview together years before. After that, we were blessed with a makeup artist who took my under eye circles down to, well, better under eye circles. A tour perk that didn't carry with us to the other events, but it was fun to dream. I am Roberto Casey, makeup artist here in New York City, and today I'm going to be doing space makeovers for Xena. A few hours later, the night was in full swing. don't get enough interaction with other readers on my daily life so yeah coming to events like these where it's not just random readers but readers that are into the same kinds of books that you are that makes it so amazing and what's it like to be a reader in New York City? it's kind of hard because I went to a school where there wasn't a lot of other people that read but there's a lot of convenient Barnes and Nobles so that makes it better I'm an aspiring author so to just look at like Sasha and you from like going from the bottom to the top and it's like I just want to hear all about it. My name is Jordan Claire McCraw and I play Andy and Zena. I was in the recording studio um, probably for upwards of 12 hours.
we're in Canada and I'm literally so excited to be here. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I literally brought all of his books, like the murder complex, and then Sasha's book that she helped, and then finally, I'm Bryn Collier. I am the product manager for Harlequin Teen and um, one of the many supporters of Zenith. Yeah. <laughs> um, why I'm so excited about today is we have 80 to 90 super stoked fans downstairs who finally get to read Zenith um, when I've been reading it and talking about it for over a year. So I'm just really excited to have it shared with the world. So I'm super excited to moderate because I love asking questions. <laughs> a curious little creature and my brain's always like but why <laughs> and now I get to just ask it in front of hundreds of people it's gonna be great <laughs> Five words to describe the other person. Oh, oh gosh, I'm scared of what Lindsay's gonna say. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Okay. Can I start with a few intro words before I hit my phone? Yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> She's like a super excited chihuahua named Sasha. Yeah. <laughs> she is really, really calming. <laughs> Really can work. Yeah, yeah really, 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 really calming. Really calming. Okay. Like very calming. Whenever I like have been with other stores house with Lindsay, she's like just so like calm and composed, and I'm over here being like a rabid bunny. I'm like, ah! mostly it's just because I'm always like half napping. <laughs> <laughs> excuse from a writer, but the rest of book tour really was a blur. We stopped in Texas for a full 36 hours in my hometown. A speech at my old high school, a chance to share what I hope is an inspiring story with young teens. After that, it was a blissful night of book signing at my local Barnes & Noble, the place where I've done all of my launches since the start of my career. I put my camera down for most of Texas. I wanted to soak it in, recharge, regroup, and remember things with my own eyes instead of through the lens of a camera. But for the sake of the documentary, my critique partner Rebecca took over filming the event. Texas holds a special place in my heart. It's home, but it's also an incredible state for readers and writers. The booksellers are super passionate, the readers are lovely, but there's something to be said about Texas librarians and how they push YA books. I know that a huge amount of my readership is because of those Texas librarians, and there were quite a few of them already stoked about Zenith. Plus. My mom always supplies cookies for Texas events. Overall, the night was a smashing success. And I think it really is true that everything is bigger in Texas, especially crowds. Then it was off to the place where Zenith reached new heights, California.
working on editing this video and Tasha is about to show up. So we're waiting on her. <laughs> oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, thanks. What the heck? I did Lindsay's hair. I'm very photogenic. <laughs> What's this called? This is called the Christine braid. <laughs> the apple pie braid. I love it. So today is kind of a big day. It's actually a very big day. Find out if Zenith hit the hardcover New York Times list or not. The list is like the pinnacle. It's kind of like the dream that you have as an author to someday have your book come out and it hit the New York Times list um, on release week. I've always said I don't care about that, but at the end of the day, really what matters um, is if you're proud of the book that you wrote. We find out today around like five o'clock New York time. But at the same time, I know if it doesn't hit, it's okay. But crossing my fingers, um, really just getting ready. We're heading off to LA today for another signing and I'm just going to sit here and I'm not gonna check my phone continually all day waiting for my agent to call. waiting on the phone call from our editor or from one of our agents. Any time now, it's almost time in New York for the list to be reported. So now we are just anxiously, very anxiously <laughs> waiting. Sasha? Yeah? Down. Yeah? It's Lauren. Oh, hey, we're what? Seven speaker. Oh, hey, we're... Lindsay? Uh-huh. You guys are number seven on the heart. <laughs> because it's like a whole like career of being told you're not good enough, you know? Yeah. And then like finally to get to this moment and to be able to have like share it with people, yeah. you know? I think it's like, I, I love you so much. Such an accomplishment, guys. 
<laughs> I feel just like we're shaking. No, you're making me cry. <laughs> I'm gonna ugly cry on YouTube twice. <laughs> I can't believe this. We picked up our phones and told all our family and friends. And then the love began to pour in from readers and fellow industry professionals all across social media. It was a feeling unlike any other. The pinnacle, I'd always called it. But in that moment, it was if I'd swap lives with someone else, or maybe I'd stepped into the worn pages of a well-loved fairy tale. The excitement carried on. An hour-long interview with First Draft Podcast. A celebration at the Grove where we joined up with friends. Then we hit Barnes & Noble, a location widely loved by authors and readers across the U.S. Wait, tell me what it was like to work on the cover of Zenith. Man, it was an incredible experience. Uh, it was fantastic working with you and Sasha and all of us together and with uh, Harlequin and uh, it was just great. It was a lot of work. That map took a long time to make. So, but yeah, so exciting. My name is Christine. I'm moderating today for, I was going to say Zenith and Sasha and Lindsay at the same time. For Sasha and Lindsay for their Zenith release, but it's not the release, it's their eighth tour stop, but I'm moderating as if like we're celebrating the release. They hit the New York Times best on us today, so it's a very exciting day. Okay, wait, let's do a video. Everyone scream and be loud and excited like now, go! <laughs> celebrate it again. Say hi everyone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> San Francisco, an eye-catching place where it both rains and shines in a single hour. We found ourselves eager to explore but exhausted enough to be content gazing at the city from above. We talked about dreams for the future, we ate dinner 100 stories in the sky. It was the final U.S. stop in our Zenith tour, and we were joined by some incredibly cool women. Hannah from A Clockwork Reader, and New York Times bestselling author Susan Dennard. I want to see yourself and be like, hey, I look great. Or not. So. Or not. Yes, I regret <laughs> looking that way. We're going to stare at this. The event was a blast, with insightful conversation and plenty of laughter. I even got the surprise joy of signing lots of stock for my original titles. After that, we crashed. Then it was back to Canada, where we would end the Zenith tour for good. Vancouver was a dream, a city I never wanted to leave, a place that reminded me of the United Kingdom where many of the ideas for Zenith were born, and the readers who joined us for the final event, an absolutely electric crowd. We signed and we signed and we sang a song just for Canada. And when it was all said and done, I realized something. What I said earlier is true. No one gives you a guidebook for how to have a successful career as an author. But I think maybe that's part of the fun. Writing is about dreaming. It's about trying to string together a story, one word, one character at a time. Being an author is an adventure. When I started this journey years before now, I don't think I knew the road that was spread out before me. But I know this. I'm grateful for it all. I'm grateful for you all, every person, every moment, every step of the way. Zenith is only the beginning of a new road, a new journey. I can't wait to see what else lies ahead. <laughs>